Warriors! Are banks going to close? Are we going to see another blockbuster moment? My name is Coach JV. I am the top health and mindset coach in the world. What you believe in your heart, you think in your mind, will eventually become your words and become your reality. If you can see it in your mind, eventually you can hold it in your hands. What you repeatedly do gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious subconscious mind, excuse me, eventually becomes an unconscious activity. So you're just accumulation of your thoughts, actions, and behaviors and your decisions. So I want to talk to you about Blockbuster. Now, many of you think that Blockbuster went out of business because of Netflix. Now, that may have been part of it, but there's a key component to this. Anytime you're moving from a new industrial revolution to another or from a new era to another, the leadership is unbelievably critical. The leadership will make or break the company. So will banks go out of business? The question is, who are the leaders that can lead the banks into the new quantum financial system? That is the answer. So the real block, but reason Blockbuster failed, hint, it's not Netflix. This is pretty interesting. According to Last Blockbuster, a new documentary streaming on Netflix, apparently enough, the video rental franchise um, undoing wasn't so much due to the streaming juggernaut as it was a combination of unfortunate corporate decisions and the stock market crash of 2008. Most people think Blockbuster went out of business because of Netflix. I'm going to share my opinion on this at the end, but it was not the truth. Tom Casey, the former chief financial officer of Blockbuster Video, said the documentary, what really happened was Blockbusters and Netflix were pretty evenly positioned to grow in 2000, 2007, 2008, 2009. They had capital and we didn't. Key word. I'm going to teach you the game, Warriors. They had capital and we didn't. Remember the word leadership, remember the word capital, and I'm going to teach you how I'm investing like this, not listening to a bunch of YouTubers going to pump and dumps, capital and leadership. Blockbuster was bought in 1994, media giant Viacom by $8.4 billion. Unfortunately, Blockbuster's massive debt in the early 2000s and poor leadership meant it lacked an infrastructure to successfully move into a streaming-centric future. I'm going to read that line again. Because this is how you should be doing your investing is based on the leadership team and their ability to futuristically think of where we're going, not where we are. That will make you more money than focusing on just the cryptocurrency alone, going deep into the leadership team. Blockbuster was bought in 1994 by a media giant Viacom, $8.4 billion. Unfortunately, Blockbuster's massive debt in early 2000s and poor leadership meant it lacked the infrastructure to successfully move into the streaming centric future. We are in a blockbuster type moment with the banking system. And I'm going to show you this right here. So this was by The Economist magazine. Um, the Economist magazine has you know, predicted this, all of this stuff. So it says, could digital currencies put banks out of business? So we're going to listen to about three to four minutes of this. So bear with me. And then I'm going to break down to you all the way down to what banks need. Banks are not going to go anywhere if they have the proper leadership and they have the capital to survive. And there's cryptocurrencies that can provide that. They can't provide the leadership, but they can provide the capital for banks to move into the quantum financial system. Companies. But for central bankers, the problem is even more acute. They fear these developments could cut the cord between the central bank and the economy altogether. These super apps in China, they now, they start off just doing payments and now they do provision of loans, they do provision of investment services, they provide insurance, you know, they do all the things that banks do. Central bankers feel as though their sort of ability to oversee and conduct monetary policy and oversight is, you know, fundamentally slipping away. So some central banks have taken radical action by creating their own digital currencies to rival the tech giant's payment systems. So I want you to think about that. Why do you think China moved so quickly and efficiently into digital yuan? Great leadership. The hope this will secure their grasp on the economy. So this level of discomfort is potentially prompting them to sort of act, to change this you know, economic system, the monetary system that has underpinned uh, modern economies for you know, 250 years. China is one of the largest economies leading the way by trialing a digital yuan. 
you might have heard of Bitcoin or other digital money that is supposed to disrupt finance. But digital currency issued by governments in this way might be even more radical. Here's how it works. Most central bank money is held by commercial banks. As res- this is critical to pay attention to, Wars. Reserves against customer deposits. You can only access a small amount of this government-made money via physical notes and coins, as this physical cash is issued by the central bank. In the UK, banknotes are even signed by the chief cashier of the Bank of England. A central bank digital currency, or CBDC, is a bit like digital cash, as it gives the consumer a direct relationship with the central bank. So here's a key factor. CBDCs pull us from the central bank closer, oh, excuse me, from the commercial bank closer to the central bank. So leadership is going to play a critical role in the commercial banks. The difference is central bank is government. Okay. You have um, your, like the Federal Reserve is not government, but this, well, now it is, it's under the treasury here. But um, in a commercial bank is like Bank of America, Wells Fargo. So in theory, instead of keeping your money in a commercial bank, you could hold all your money in the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England. CBDCs are only being used or trialed in a handful of countries worldwide, but they're growing fast. 80% of central banks are considering issuing them in the future. Bank of International Settlements, which is a club of central bankers, says that uh, within three years, a fifth of the world will live in countries that have this central bank digital money. This could change. So this is that key factor right there, Wars, is why I keep telling my Wars, this is not the generational wealth shift. This is the precipice of the shift in generational wealth. 2025 is when it's all going to shift, in my opinion. And everything. If everyone put their money into a CBDC, then fractional reserve banks could potentially be out of a job. This okay, key. If everybody put their money in a CBDC, fractional reserve banks, your banks don't have your money, your, your commercial banks, Wells Fargo, uh, well, uh, uh, Bank of America, they don't have your money. Fractional reserves is they can lend your money out. If you put $100 in, they can lend out $90 dollars of that. They only have to keep 10%. In your transactions accounts now, which is a checking account, they have to keep zero reserves. So what's happening is they are going to run into capital issues. Now, what happened to Blockbuster? They ran out of capital and they had poor leadership. So the proper leaders that are running banks, let's just jump right into this. The people who can run banks properly, I don't particularly enjoy Jamie Dimon, but he is a futuristic looking leader. And Jamie Dimon says JP Morgan Chase should be absolutely scared shitless about fintech threats. He's not scared shitless. He's been preparing for this for a long time. He is flooding the crap out of the market. Jamie Dimon's message to management team 3.4 trillion banking Goliath, JP Morgan Chase, be frightened of fintech rivals. Hey, little secret, guys. They bought a fintech company. Absolutely. We should be scared shitless about that, Jamie Dimon says. Dimon said he sent his de- uh, deputies a list of global competitors and that PayPal, Square, Stripe, Ant Finance, and well as Amazon, Apple, and Google were names that banks need to keep an eye on. JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamin Dimon has watched us uh, watched while a new breed of fintech players led by PayPal, Square, and tech giants around the world have exponentially grown users and market value. Jamie Dimon the head of Wells Fargo, the head of Bank of America, the head of um, all these huge banks, are, uh, Goldman Sachs, are sitting behind the scenes. They are coming up with a game plan. That's what great leadership does. That's what they do. Or they're going to have a blockbuster moment. Now, there's two things that are happening. That's why Jamie Dimon is buying fintech companies. That's why Wells Fargo is allowing their customers, their rich customers, invest in Bitcoin. That's why Wells Fargo spent $5 million on a cryptocurrency company. That's why Bank of America owns the most cryptocurrency patents. That's why Bank of America has a patent in 2014 for uh, custodying cryptocurrency. They are smart leaders moving in the quantum financial system. When I was in banking years ago, banking school, executive banking school, we were moving to financial technology. This was a long time ago, Warriors. Okay, so crypto... Um, this was came out on May 27th. So crypto and blockchain starts start startups set their sights on global payment industry. When Tesla announced in February they would accept Bitcoin for electric vehicles, the crypto world rejoiced. Here was a publicly traded company, frontline billionaire, publicly uh, 
publicly machine, endorsing its status as a medium of exchange. The asset reputation as a store of value, meanwhile, was varnished uh, burnished, is that burnished on the market as it soared up to 44,000. It was all FUD wars. We know that, that that narrative changed a little bit. Here we go. Traditional banks fighting fires on multiple fronts. The banking sector retains a great deal of influence in the payment space. However, the old fashioned behemoths are no longer the only show in town and finding themselves flanked by fast growing e payment solutions like Monzo, Cash App, WireX, well as crypto native protocols, exchanges, and apps. Okay. Making payments solely through a bank account is starting to feel more, oh, I can't even pronounce that word. So I think that means feel as um, archaic, I guess, as conducting long distance calls through a fixed landline telephone with the use of an operator to solicit who will pay for the charges and connect the call. They know what's coming, Warriors. They are not sitting back on their hands. They are moving quickly. The banks that I'm concerned about is the small credit unions. That's what I'm concerned about. The big behemoths are going to survive this. They know about the blockbuster. They know about these situations. Blockbuster was out of business because of lack of capital. Remember that? And leadership. So hopefully you're writing notes. Now let's listen to what Ripple's Ashish Birla says on May 11th around on-demand liquidity. A lot of them turn to Ripple and RippleNet to help them accelerate growth. Uh, the other sort of trend was that, uh, especially in Southeast Asia, you saw cash become a pretty big concern. It was really tough to actually get any sort of line of credit. And that's where the power of not only using Ripple and on-demand liquidity for payments, but then also using those same products for a line of credit as well. And we came to the rescue to a lot of our customers that were in a bit of a, you know, a cash crunch. Uh, and they were really stable customers, but they just needed a little bit of a line of credit to help them accelerate their business during COVID. And yes, you know, we were there, we solved a big problem for them. So that is something that we want to expand uh, in 2021 as well, <clears throat> line of credit. So let's turn to on-demand liquidity or ODL. What kind of things are you hearing? From this is what you really need to pay attention to. This is where uh, XRP, why I'm so bullish on XRP, XLM, any of these companies that help create on-demand liquidity and free up capital. Keyword, why did Blockbuster go out? Leadership and lack of capital from our customers that are using this product. Yeah, so what was interesting about that is that other customers started hearing about ODL by word of mouth. And, uh, and it was actually the CFO at other customers that was hearing about some of the benefits of ODL, that you can use it to source liquidity 24 by seven. Whereas the old world, you had to do it within business hours, Monday through Friday. And so we're hearing our, uh, you know, different CFOs come and talk to us and saying like, listen, we'd love to use ODL for our internal treasury. Uh, and that is something that we heard more and more uh, in 2020, but after, you know, in 2021, we're hearing that accelerate. So that's something that we're gonna be digging a little bit deeper in, seeing if we can solve more customer problems with ODL specifically. Lastly, what kind of things have our customers been able to accomplish using RippleNet? One, we want to be there so that you can grow your business and transform your business. Uh, I think that the digital acceleration uh, induced by COVID is only going to continue in a post-COVID world. And RippleNet is going to be that technology to help you expand uh, even further. So, you know, I'm excited for, uh, for that in 2021. I'm also excited about learning what else we can do with our technology and bringing that to market uh, in 2021 as well. So how does on-demand liquidity run across the rails? XRP. Okay, let's talk about, I want to I wanna teach you the game warriors. I want to educate you as you look this way at a pandemic, what's happening this way. So what's the difference between banks' liquidity and capital? This is really important to understand. Liquidity is the measure of cash and other assets bank have available to quickly pay bills and meet short-term business financial obligations. Capital is the measure of the resources banks have to absorb losses. Let me give you an example. In order to move money across rails and to acquire high value customers, which drive the most revenue to your bank, right? The more money you have from high value customers, the more you can lend, right? Fractional reserves lending, or we'll see if that changes. But liquidity is a measurement of the cash assets you have available for quick, but you also have to have some liquidity available to pay your customers if they run the bank, right? So if you don't have liquidity 
and liquidity gets tied up when you have an old archaic banking system. So if I go in to do a wire transfer and I'm transferring $10 million across the banking rails, that's tying up, tying up liquidity, right? Okay. Capital is a measurement of resources bank have to absorb losses. So what do they have on hand? And now we're going into Basel three for banks, the new rules for banks in June now, which we're going to talk about and break down uh, from June 10th to June 19th for you guys. And that is going to change the whole game for riskier assets. So your banks are running into what's called a liquidity crisis, right? The banks aren't, um, I think last year it was, uh, it had something to do with bank repos. So banks are going to be running into a liquidity crisis. So the banks that have good leadership and the banks that can get on-demand liquidity and move into this new quantum financial system and become the service banks so that they can keep some of that business from the central banks are going to survive this. Now, what does RippleNet do? It frees working capital with on-demand liquidity. That's exactly what Ripple does. It actually helps with on-demand liquidity. So it eliminates names for pre-funding accounts. So what does that mean, Warriors? I want to, I mean, all this stuff isn't exciting, right? But if you know this stuff, you have a leg up on other people investing in crypto and in the stock market. You understand bank, you understand the system, right? Liquidity means pre-funded accounts. For example, if I'm sending money over to Dustin in Europe, right? He's sitting right next to me. So I'm sending must, uh, uh, Dustin money in Europe to buy a house, right? There needs to be pre-funded accounts on both sides so that we can make sure that that money moves across the rail so the customer can be taken care of right? The payments are very slow. It moves through the SWIFT system. So if I go into Wells Fargo Bank and he's at uh, Bank of London or wherever he's at, I have to go to a banker. I have to sit down with the banker. It has to get approved by a manager. It has to go through the SWIFT system and has to go up and through the Federal Reserve. has to be approved. That could take about three days. So my capital now is tied up. I don't have the on-demand liquidity available. I also have a customer who we're holding their money for $10 million going across trying to buy a house. And what if something messes up through that process? And there's a slip up and our escrow didn't close in time. And we have a $30,000 discrepancy. Who's going to eat that if I'm a high value customer with $20 million in the bank? The bank is going to try to keep that customer. There's all kinds of risk with not having that liquidity. Does that make sense, Warriors? With RippleNet, with XRP, there is no issue with that. I walk in. If I sat down with the banker, they would have no idea it's running across XRP rails. They would be running behind the scenes with uh, RippleNet. I would sit down with the banker. Boom, I would send it a little, just like an email, on demand man liquidity, boom, he has it in his bank, the deal is done. We are moving to a blockchain type environment. It's fast, payments can be sent around the world within seconds. So there's that one story where he, this guy sent $50 million for 30 cents within three seconds. It's affordable to get the best in market price on exchange rates. So this is the way I want you to think, Warriors. Think about this, okay? If you were in the system right now and you're a smart leader, Oh, let's let's pretend you are the bank owner and CEO. You're a smart leader and you're sitting there with your board of directors having a meeting behind the scenes and you see this massive crisis coming up and you see some liquidity drying up and you say, hey, guys, we could either take a bunch of our capital and we could build out our own infrastructure like JPM Morgan did. They brought their own JPM coin to create their own liquidity, their own blockchain and be able to build their own infrastructure. JP Morgan is going to be a cryptocurrency company. I guarantee you they already have their own cryptocurrency protocol. And you're a leader sitting there and you say to your team, listen, we need to get on board with a company like RippleNet, XLM, these companies that are going to help us. Let's bring the public and private sector again. Let's get with a company like Ripple that has had zero errors and let's move quickly and efficiently into this quantum financial system or we're going to perish. Because number one, we have a liquidity issue. We have a capital issue, which is a big, big problem. And with the Basel 3, from what I'm seeing coming up, they're going to have even more issues because they're going to have uh, not less ability to lend riskier assets, which brings their profitability down, which brings their cash flow down. So now you have a liquidity and a capital issue. So banks are in a really awkward, weird position. But don't think they're not just sitting back and trying to plan this right now, Warriors. This has been planned out since 2008, since 1971. This has been a long time. And I'm giving you the playbook right now. Now you have an opportunity to sit back on your heels and watch this happen. And many of you are watching my videos over and over again, and you still haven't taken action. Now, I don't care if you get into cryptocurrency, but what I care to do is that you start to take control of your life and you stop being manipulated by the preemptive programming that's keeping you in a job just over broke, following the same patterns over and over again, making money, losing money, getting back in debt, paying off debt. It's this vicious cycle that you're on. Warriors. And I'm here to help you create free dome to free this dome right here. So what we have done is we've created a Warrior Academy, and I'm going to talk about this on every single YouTube video. We have 1,900 warriors now worldwide, 16 different countries. 
what do we offer? You have access to my portfolio, my exact portfolio. It doesn't change very often, but when it changes, I share it with you guys. I'm a fundamental cryptocurrency investor. You also see my exit strategy. And every time I exit the market, what do I do with that money? For example, I'm doing silver and I'm staking in DIA at 10%. Okay. You have cryptocurrency calls every single Thursday, technical analysis calls on Friday, a discord with over 1,800, 1,500 warriors right now working to help each other in the quantum financial system. You get news updates every single time news comes out for cryptocurrency in the discord. You get the YouTube videos updates right away. Um, you, get, you get to communicate with other people that are like minded like you. The best part also that we just added is a cryptocurrency section in our private social media network. We pull you off of Facebook and the social media networks. We have our own private network. And there's a section in there and under topics where you can ask questions, whether it's a beginner question or a super advanced question. If we don't know the answer, we will find it. And I have a team monitoring that so you can ask questions. Simple questions like, how do I remove money out of my account? We can answer those questions for you. I always say it's not a perfect academy. What we're damn good at is answering questions and finding the answer for you. Because the key is the community you're surrounded around. If you're trying to become a multimillionaire and trying to build generational wealth, you can't be around weak minded people. You can't be around poor minded people. That's just how it is. That's a book, Think and Grow Rich. Surround yourself with a mastermind of people. So everything you need is description down below. And if you made it this far, you are truly, truly a warrior because a normal human being has a five second tension span. Click the link down below and we'll see you on the other side. Warriors, rise. Let's go.